Hello everybody. So this morning we are making steak and eggs on the Blackstone. Love me some steak and eggs. I had a hankering for them, so I actually had some leftover thinly sliced New York strips. Made some cheese steaks the other night, so I had a little bit left over of that. Uh, we got some leftover red potatoes that I made mashed potatoes the other night. We're gonna chop those up real, real small and uh, make our own hash browns. And then we're gonna throw down a couple of eggs, some toast, and super easy steak and eggs breakfast. So can't wait, I love steak and eggs. So if you're new to the channel, I want to thank you for stopping by. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell. And if you're a current subscriber, I want to thank you for all the support. I love all the comments. I uh, love all the uh, suggestions and tips and, and what you like and what you don't. So keep them coming. And make sure you hit that thumbs up. So everybody, let's get cooking. Here we go. So we're going to start off with some papas or potatoes. And not going to peel them here. I'm uh, just going to slice them up, dice them up, uh, kind of like a medium dice, not too thin, not too thick. I like to leave the skin on here because it's steak and egg, so it's kind of a rustic dish to begin with. So no real need to peel them, just my preference. <clears throat> and then once we get them all peeled up, uh, toss them in the bowl and set them off to the side, and they will be good to go. So... These are going to be our homemade hash browns. You can use the frozen ones. You can use these. I had these left over, so I figure what the heck. And red potato. Red potatoes are very versatile. I love them, and uh, I usually buy them by the bag. So had a half an onion left over as well. So again, medium dice, uh, not too thin, not too thick. And I love the way this sweetens up the hash browns. When they get caramelized, oh yeah, they taste great. So again, move these off to the side and break out our steaks. These are some thinly sliced New York strips I had left over. <clears throat> Just gonna salt and pepper these. Real simple, nothing fancy. I like to salt and pepper them on both sides. And, you know, do them 15, 15 minutes, 20 minutes before you stick them on the grill or brittle. That should be fine. <clears throat> so that's it. Our Blackstone is nice and heated up. And we are going to start off with our toast. So I buttered one side of uh, four slices of bread and we just put them down on the griddle and i know you, everybody knows how to cook toast <laughs> that's okay i just like to show how good the toast comes out on the blackstone it really does oh uh, you can butter both sides as well i've done that in the past but i think one is enough um uh, just want to keep an eye on them flip them around turn them around wherever they the hot spots are wherever they're getting a little too overcooked. You want to keep that in mind when you turn them for the next one. And they don't take long at all. Literally about a couple minutes and they're good. So we turn them over and let's check on them again. Give them a little flip, see what's going on underneath. Oh yeah, these are done. Look how beautiful that is. Come on. <laughs> it's hard to get that in a toaster. So I do this first because the grill is nice and clean. And just stack them up, push them off to the side, and they will be on standby. All right, next up is the potatoes. <clears throat> These take the longest to cook, probably about 10, 10 12 minutes, I would say, tops. Um, and same thing as I always do, put them down. And we're going to season them. 
with some Uncle Steve Shake, which I'll put the description down below. Uh, that was given to me by Daddy Dutch. You can see there, Daddy Dutch's name was on it, but the, it was actually it's actually Uncle Steve Sh Gator Shake. Uh, first time I tried this, and let me tell you, it came out great. So I highly recommend it. Check out Uncle Steve Shake. So we just put them on there liberally, and then we just kind of want to mix these around so they get all the uh, the oil and the seasoning all mixed and coated evenly. And then it's just like always with these potatoes, you want, you want to steam them up, a little bit of water around the outside, cover them with the grill dome, cook them for two or three minutes, take off the grill dome, stir them around again, and just repeat and do that two or three times and just check them and you'll know when they're done. So there we go, first cover, two or three minutes later, we're going to take this off give it a stir to check the bottoms make sure they're not getting burnt which they're not but you can definitely see the color coming through they're looking good but we want to make sure that uh, the insides are nice and soft So here we add our onions after the first uncovering of the steam uh, grill dome. Um, onions don't take as long as the potatoes, so that's why I kind of give the potatoes a head start. You can put the onions in at the beginning too. They're just going to be much more um, cooked, I guess you could say, when the whole thing is done. So. I try to time it so that so everything comes out to the right consistency and texture. So that's it. Put them back together and we're going to steam these up again uh, for another round of steaming. So here we go. A little bit of water and give them a cover. And they are looking good. So we will give it the fork test. And I was hungry, so I decided to give it the taste test as well. Because <laughs> it looks so good. I wanted to try out that Uncle Steve shake. And it is delicious. So that's it. We're going to move these over to the side. And they're going to chill out. We're going to turn down that right burner to low. And they will just hang out there and, until we're ready for them. And time to uh, add our steak. So... You want to pat these dry, and this will help with the searing process. Since they're so thin, you just kind of want to, pss, pss, you know, on each side, basically like a minute on each side. Um, and the more water that's down there, that takes, you know, it cools down the, the temperature of the blackstone. So that's it. We put it down, let it sit there for about a minute, and then we're going to check them and see how they look on the other side. <clears throat> They look good, so we'll give it a flip. And nice, nice sear there, beautiful. Just give it another flip, let it sit there for another minute. We'll check them, and that's it. It's real simple. And we'll put these over on the low burner as well. They can finish off cooking while they're sitting over there. And, uh, and uh, we'll put our eggs on. So first with the eggs, I like to clean the area so the eggs look nice and uh, presentable. So unless I'm using bacon grease, that's a different story. So I decided to just scrape off the remnants from the steaks, get it nice and clean. And normally I would put down some oil here and some butter, but I completely forgot. So I just went straight up egg on the <laughs> on the blackstone. And I honestly did not realize I did this until after the fact. Uh, but it worked out fine because I, I, I covered these with a grill dome as well and steamed them. So they almost came out like poached eggs. Uh, par partially poached, partially fried. And they, they came out great. So 
Except for the one that I broke, sorry. <laughs> I'm not perfect. Uh, so that's it. We put them, uh, put the eggs down. I, The ones that kind of ran away a little bit, you want to bring that back in. And then I decided not to flip these and do like regular fried eggs. I wanted to do like kind of a, a sunny side up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water here and cover them up with the grill, uh, the grill dome. Oh, forgot the water. Hang on a second. And there it is, right there. And also, I forgot, my mind wasn't there today apparently. I also forgot to add a little bit of salt. So, a little bit of salt. Now we got it figured out. <laughs> add some more water again, and this time we're going to cover them. And it really only takes one time covering them for about a minute. I would check them after a minute just to make sure they're not getting overcooked. And boom, they look beautiful. So, time to take them off and check them out. beautiful steak and eggs breakfast plate with some homemade hash browns some perfectly cooked toast oh let's dig in I'm starving okay so we got our steak it's a thin steak so it's kind of hard to make it like perfectly medium rare which are not mm. but it's steak, and it's got great flavor. Let's cut it to this egg. Mmm. That's what I'm talking about. Some egg yolk with that steak. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Some of the potatoes. Mm. With the onions in there as well, the sweet onions. Oh, it tastes so good. Mm mm mm. Guys, yeah, I'm about to dig into this breakfast. <laughs> I am ready. Everybody, I want to thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting, and we'll keep on cooking. Big Cat. <laughs>